Good afternoon. I'm still reporting on the economy. Late Monday, Iceland's government released the long-awaited report on monetary reform by my friend parliamentarian Frosty Sigurdsson, entitled A Better Monetary System for Iceland. Frosty produced the report at the request of the Prime Minister of Iceland and was assisted by many of the leading lights of monetary reform worldwide, such as Professor Joe Huber in Germany and author James Robinson in the UK. The foreword to the report is written by Lord Adair Turner of the UK. Lord Turner, a member of the UK's Financial Policy Committee, nails the basic problem in the second paragraph. The fundamental issue is the ability of banks to create credit money and purchasing power and the instability which inevitably follows. Turner ends his foreword succinctly. Money creation is too important to be left to bankers alone. Lord Mervyn King, the former governor of the Bank of England, is quoted, Of all the many ways of organizing banking, the worst is the one we have today. Change is, I believe, inevitable. The question is only whether we can think our way through to a better outcome before the next generation is damaged by a future and bigger crisis. The crisis has already left a legacy of debt to the next generation. We must not leave them the legacy of a fragile banking system, too. Frosty then lays out the scope of the report. Since 1970, bank crises have occurred 147 times in 114 countries, causing serious reductions in output and increases in debt. Despite its frequent failures, the banking system has remained essentially unchanged and homogenous around the world. Frosty then lays out the basic solution. In a sovereign money system, only the central bank, owned by the state, may create money as coin, notes, or electronic money. Commercial banks would be prevented from creating money. Frosty does allow for complementary currencies such as Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but does warn that since the issuer is rewarded with the seniorage, the profit from making money, they could lead to inflation and asset bubbles. Sovereign money involves controlling only the type of money that is by law acceptable as payment in commerce and for the settlement of debts and taxes. Frosty stresses that his proposal is not the nationalization of the banking system, as advocated by many socialist monetary reformers, such as Ellen Brown. Although commercial banks will no longer create money, they will continue to administer payment services for customers and will make loans by acting as intermediaries between savers and borrowers. Crucially, the power to create money is kept separate from the power to decide how that new money is used, thereby ensuring that conflicts of interest do not lead to too much or too little money being created or money being created for private rather than public benefit. Towards the end of this 90-page report, Frosty again draws a bright line between the role of government in money creation and the role of those who decide where this new money is spent. Under sovereign money, however, the government is not allowed to create money directly. The decision to create money would be made by a money creation committee independent of government on the basis of what is appropriate for the economy as a whole. The committee will not have the power to decide who benefits from its money creation or what new money will be used for. The allocation of new money will be decided democratically by Parliament. This is sure to produce howls of protest from both the gold bugs and the bankers, but as Frosty correctly points out, in the current system, however, commercial banks are allowed to both create money and decide what new money is used for. Also, banks are currently incentivized to create money based on what is best for their bottom line, but not what is appropriate for the economy as a whole. 
This is in perfect alignment with the great Yale University professor of mathematical economics, Irving Fisher, who in the 1930s wrote, nationalize money but do not nationalize banking. This report puts tiny Iceland far ahead of any other nation I know of worldwide in the race for monetary reform. I knew Frosty before he won his seat in Parliament. He has been an IT professional all his career, being the Icelandic head of one of the largest American IT companies. Frosty writes with brevity and precision and is a welcomed addition to those who have called for this the most important of all political reforms facing humankind this century. I call on all IT professionals to spread this news far and wide in your nation. I call on all Greeks to make this report the standard by which you will judge the performance of your new government. Frosty's groundbreaking report is titled, Monetary Reform, a Better Monetary System for Iceland. It will be used by reformers worldwide as the roadmap to freeing their countries from the clutches of the debt money system. I'm still reporting on the economy. Good day.